Hello, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us this evening uh, for an artist talk uh, with Maria Passenau. Um, my name is uh, Magda Radu, and together with Alexandra Croitoru and Stefan Sava, we are uh, running uh, Salonul de Proiecte, an independent uh, contemporary art space in Bucharest. And uh, within our program, uh, we are um, now involved in a, in a project uh, which uh, uh, deals with um, uh, uh, an important and, uh, an important photo archive from Bucharest, Romania, uh, the uh, image collection Mihai Rovanu. Uh, it is a complex program uh, that you can find more information about by checking our website photopassfuture.ro. Uh, we aim to help uh, preserve and digitize uh, this uh, uh, extraordinarily important uh, photographic collection. And uh, in our space, we uh, want to organize uh, exhibitions with uh, original materials from the archive, but uh, to also undertake important work of digitization uh, and uh, actual preservation of, of the content of, of this uh, archive. Uh, since the start of, of this project, which is financed through an EEA grant and run through Ro Cultura uh, at the Ministry of Culture, uh, we um, organized a, a thematic exhibition centered around Bucharest and public space, and we hosted three intervention, art, contemporary uh, artistic interventions uh, within this, uh, uh, this exhibition. And now we are in the second chapter uh, of our uh, public program uh, uh, dealing with uh, this archive and um, uh, since uh, March we uh, are now hosting an exhibition into our space which is dealing with uh, representations of gendered in um, Romanian photography from the end of 19th century up until uh, the uh, 60s and uh, 70s of uh, the 10th, 20th century. Um, and within this exhibition, we are showcasing uh, or attempting to showcase various uh, gendered codes of representation, uh, which in within this uh, extremely rich uh, history of visuality. Uh, and uh, Maria Passenau is the third artist um, um, invited to, to contribute with a new piece uh, to, to be exhibited uh, within this exhibition. And uh, uh, this piece can actually be seen at Salonul de Proiecte uh, starting today until the end of uh, uh, of this exhibition centered around gender, which is the uh, 4th of July. So uh, we are uh, eagerly waiting for you to, to come into our physical space and to, to see uh, Maria's uh, piece, which was uh, made, uh, of course, um, based on our online communication, since the conditions didn't allow for her to, to be present in Bucharest and to uh, delve into the content of the archive uh, physically. But we tried as much as possible to, to mediate this, this communication and to make available for her research and her interest uh, the uh, many scanned items that, that we managed to, uh, to, to do so far. Um, so, um, um, I'm, I'm very uh, excited about the outcome of, uh, of Maria's uh, thinking uh, around our photo archive. Uh, and uh, she, will, she will tell us more about this piece and about her process. Um, just uh, a few words before giving her the floor to say that Maria Passenau is part of a uh, um, young generation of contemporary artists from Norway. She is born in 1994. And until recently, she has lived and worked in Oslo. Recently, she moved to a, a different town in, in Norway. 
Uh, she studied at the Norwegian School of Photography in Trondheim, and um, she already exhibited widely. Um, um, she, she had solo exhibitions at uh, Makrit Malmö, uh, at K4 Gallery in Oslo, and also a, a very important uh, exhibition in 2019 at Fotogalerit Oslo. Uh, Photo Gallery Oslo is also our partner in this uh, project. Uh, we exchange uh, curatorial and uh, archival knowledge um, uh, about uh, photography, about photographic archives, but about also contemporary uh, discourse around photography. And um, we also consult uh, with uh, Photo Gallery uh, regarding uh, uh, artists that we might uh, from Norway that we uh, might invite into into our project and uh, Maria Passenau uh, came to our attention uh, uh, through this uh, collaboration, the collaboration between Salon de Projekt and Photo Gallery. Um, so this is the, the context of her, her presence here, and uh, we are really excited to, to hear more about her, her work uh, and to, to get to uh, share uh, some, of, uh, some of her ideas. So Maria, you have the floor. Hello. <laughs> Do you hear me or? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Good. Uh, thank you so much. First, I have to say it's like the archive are so nice. I was uh, really impressed by all the pictures. I looked through all of them and yeah, I came out with the one that I have uh, on the exhibition. Uh, I think I'm going to start with uh, showing how I work with pictures because uh, to combine pictures is like uh, a very important thing I do or it's uh, a very big part of my uh, uh, practice because I make the thing I like the most is like to combine pictures in books or for me it's like the uh, the nicest way to show photos is in a book because then you have like the full control over the whole sentences or like the whole rhythm of the pictures. In an exhibition, you can also like see it from another way or something, but in a book you have it here and you have to like, you have really big control over how the picture is represented. Also, it's like uh, it taking care good care of the picture because it's no light in it when you are not looking at it so I feel like it's yeah the best, the best way of presenting pictures uh, I'm gonna just show some pictures here mm. so uh, this is my first book that I made uh, self-published uh, I didn't get any money for it, so I pre-sold uh, the books on Kickstarter. Uh, and then I printed the whole book and I also had like, uh, didn't have any like, uh, I could do whatever I want. So I put this picture on the front. So it was many people that were skeptical about it because uh, they thought that it maybe it would go down and stuff from the store or, or they couldn't have it up in the stores and stuff but it went well really nice so here you can also see it's for me when I was going to like put together a book for me it was like important the logic of which picture that is uh, beside each other and also on the other side that is like a rhythm between the pictures and it's a logic that I made with the pictures. So here's like the orange and the, uh, the blue that is like complementing each other. Um, so, and uh, also for me, it's 
because in photo it's so much about like one or, or it's like for me it's like not about that one picture it's about combining the pictures so it's a big bigger picture in the end because you can have a really good one picture but in a book it's about like or in a series like i did for you it's about like that combination so maybe you have to take out a really good picture just to uh, get a good combination this is my second book it's also it's this one this is, this was the first one so uh and this book i also made uh it was in a box and uh, also the stickers I made <laughs> by myself. So uh, this is a different book. This is a book I made for uh, Photo Galleria, uh, the exhibition that I had there. But uh, the book was the whole uh, idea of the exhibition. So the book is only a hundred copies, but it's like so much more of the material in the book. So if you didn't see the book, you haven't like see the whole exhibition in a way. And there also I had like sound and uh, uh, print. Here also, it was all about like the combining of the pictures. Uh, and of course, how they were like showed together here also. It was like more text drawings. Um, but you can see that it's like, yeah, for me, it's logical <laughs> in a way. Uh, and then I have my third book uh, that I made uh, myself to its self-publish and it, it was made uh, by the money I made from the second book. So. It was really fast. This is like three books in three years. So here is more drawings uh, and also photography uh, and poems. So in that book and the, uh, the, the second book, I have like the start of the book is only, it's the same thing in many uh, sides. It's like a series in the start that last long so I like to also repeat myself in a way <laughs> but uh, so uh, for uh, this show uh, I looked I have this but maybe we should I don't know how if we can see the whole thing there so uh, I just want to show the uh, things that I picked out for your uh, exhibition. Uh, so here, the way that I worked, I was going through the whole archive. Uh, and then I just uh, picked the pictures that I really liked and made a folder. And uh, then I started to see how it like uh, look together like these small collages that is like these four pictures that you see there and then I compared them to my own archive and also took some new photos uh, because I wanted it to be like more like when you have this like picture picture game that you have to like choose the one that is look alike you know so um uh, for me, it was important. I was it was like some recognition between the my archive and your archive, but also it was like uh, very, that it was. I wanted it to be playful. So, uh, so so just for for people to understand, on the uh, left hand side of this montage, the four pictures are from your archive yeah. your personal archive and yeah. the right hand side the other four pictures are a selection of images from the uh, Mihai Rovanu uh, mm. archive yes yes but yeah. can I ask uh, when you say from your archive does it mean that you collected them or you uh, made these photos I made them so it's like it's from several years 
also I have one picture that is from when I was little is the uh, last one I can show you later but so this is like pictures that I've never used or I because I collect picture in a way because I uh, it's so much I do too much so I have I like a lot of material that I never show so here I could like just pick from the own show photographs so you work in digital then no it's analog but it's scanned so i scan them on my computer so everything is in a way digital but the process is a analog process mm -hmm. and you all you have scanned all your negatives so all your negatives are uh, developed and scanned uh, yeah not all of them but uh, a lot of them <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, can you tell us a bit about your attachment to the analog nowadays? I mean, how 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 does it come about uh, from from school, from your studies, uh, or uh, how how did you uh, uh, get stuck with it, so to say? <laughs> I was really fascinated by it, like. Uh, because uh, I started with photography after my confirmation. So, and then I started in a photo club uh, that was like only old guys. <laughs> and then it was me and uh, there we had someone that really liked the analog. And I thought it was so fascinating. So, but when I started on my photo school, there were really they just said that the analog is dead and they were like really trying me to do digital. So I started doing a little bit digital uh, then because I got so much uh, shit about the analog. But uh, when I quit that and I uh, also took digital when I worked in a, in a paper, the newspaper in Oslo. But uh, now when I'm just working with my own project, I only do analog because it's like, I feel like I could be more in the moment when I do the analog process because it's not about in a way the picture because you can't see the picture. It's not there, but you're taking it. So it's like, for me, it's really much it's important that it's not about like how is the finished picture for me it's about like that act that you do when you have the camera in a way uh, because uh, uh, I think it's like so easy to do things now and also like people are so uh, um, uh, they want things now 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 so they're like they're so used to getting things right away and also for me, it's like, if I would see the picture right away, maybe I wouldn't be like happy about it because I remember how it was actually. So then I would maybe not be happy about the outcome of the picture. But when I get the picture like a month after, I don't even remember how it was like the situation. So then I can see the situation from that picture and not like comparing it to the situation in a way. So I think it's, yeah, that's why, <laughs> that's uh, why. <laughs> but Maria, going back to the, to the archive of photos that you, you took, I mean, yeah. what, what kind of moments do you, are you looking for to, to be recorded? I mean, it seems to be like a continuous flow of, you know, of your intimate maybe moments with friends or by yourself. I mean, mm. I guess you're like, focusing on that I mean to record this kind of maybe spontaneous moments uh, um, uh, can you develop a little bit of, on uh, on that subject as well I mean you, oh, of course you're using your body as well I mean your body appears sometimes or not uh, yeah. in your photos mm. um, so um, I mean it's it, it's nice that you use the 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 term uh, archive because it, because it looks like a continuous uh uh you know uh, archive of images. Mm. Yeah, it's for me it's about also to like you know myself better in a way or it's been like a a, a journey for me to like to be in front of the camera and to see how uh, how far I could go with it and to 
also to remember things because I feel like I like the day after I don't remember what happened you know it's like uh, for me it's important to document uh, not only my life but the people that I love like the and my friends and my family and like because uh, I it's yeah it's so much that I just forget and I feel like if I have the picture I have like that moment in a way forever so you perceive photography as a tool to preserve memory or of some sort yeah and also to to um, yeah just to play and look how far I could go with it and just like with myself I feel like I know myself better and also I know exactly how I look like and it's the for me it's important to just like uh, be self-aware of those things. But at the same time, you are uh, critical about the self-awareness, the self-branding with which uh, images uh, nowadays are, uh, uh, you know, used for enhancing someone's profile on the social media. They, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of these images are uh, very filtered, uh, self-promotional, but, but you go in a, in a different direction. So it, it's a way of, of recording your life, uh, but at the same time is, is also going against the grain of, you know, this uh, publicness of, of images nowadays and, and how they, they circulate and how they impact uh, people's lives. You no, know, I mean it's it's also this counter direction that that you are um, you are wanting to emphasize in what you do. Yeah, I feel like it's a, it, it, I just don't know when it was so normal to just like for a normal person to like look like a commercial <laughs> per person online it's like it's that's so normal people are just like I want to get free stuff I want to do commercial like it's like it's hidden commercial in so many ways online I get like for me it's like I get really mad about it. And also I think it's like so unnatural in a way to show all these pictures that it's just like, they, it's like, I I love like the free nipple uh, thing, but I don't love that people just take a picture and post it and they don't do it. Like, but can you, can't you do it in the normal life? You know, it, it's just like an internet thing. It's not a real thing in a way because it's like, they just do it for the picture and they don't practice it like in their own life. So for me, it's so important to, it's like, uh, okay, I can post pictures. I don't do it now. I don't, I'm not on Instagram because it provoked me so much that people are just like presenting them in a way that is like not how they are like in life in a way. So for me, it's more important to live that life, to, to like swim naked in the city or just like, it's like, but I don't need a picture of it online to show that I do it in a way. Or I don't know if you, <laughs> I get so angry about that stuff, but um, yeah, I think it's important to live, like mm. to live your life and also to, to know that it's okay, it's not allowed to have your nipple online, but you can do whatever you want in your life. Like the internet is not deciding if you can like go topless or if you want to do stuff like that. It's just like that picture go down on the internet, but you can still do it. Hmm. I was yeah, I, I like, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was wondering if at any point your life was um, influenced by your uh, photographical practice, if at any time you 
would stage some events uh, because you want to make a photo of them or you consider uh, all the photos of your private life as documentary? I see it as documentary, but uh, uh, like I now I, I'm in this documentary now that it's like uh, it's a TV thing. And then I see it's like so much not true in that way. I'm just like, is what the fuck is this a documentary? You asked me to say this three times, you know? <laughs> so like documentary is, uh, I think it's like uh, everything that you e create is in a way documentary and, and not documentary because you are there and it's like, so you're so conscious about like the camera or uh, the way you capture it so uh, but for me it is like now i'm taking photos with the large format camera and that's like that takes a long time to take one picture it could take like 10 minutes or 15 minutes but in a way for me i feel like it's still like documentary pictures and portraits of the people the, that I take photos of, even though it takes a long time and it's a setting, it's still like them there being their self in a in a way. So I don't know. I think it's so difficult with like documentary. Uh, yeah, I don't know how how you can like say that anything is a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe you can show some more some more images from uh, this montage that, that you yeah. created for us and uh, guide us through uh, your uh, your archive and how you thought about its juxtapositions with the, the historical images. Yeah, so here is the second one. Uh, uh... And uh, this is very, uh, yeah, I just took the shapes and also the ET cap that I really loved because I have this like ET, it's up there, you can see it there. <laughs> uh, so it was just like, this is very like, um, just- So the, the left, the two left hand photos are, are uh, your photos and yeah. the, uh, Two on the right are from the archive. Yeah. So I really love those two from the archive. They were like, I think they're my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. And also it's like, yeah. But can you tell us why? Why why they, they drew your attention? <laughs> it's like, because they are very, very different. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But the, for me, it's like, yeah. I feel like they are, uh, they are, I don't know, they are, they are like just like connecting so good that it's like because of the uh, colors on the ET uh, cap pictures are like so um, purple. I feel like it's it's so nice with the black and white uh, in the side and also on my one that is like the. Uh, this one, I feel like this is connecting so much to that one because of the colors. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know, it's like, I don't have a logical reason why I put those pictures together. It's just like, I just saw the whole, ar like the whole archive or the picture that I like from the archive. And then I saw them and I was just like, they have to be together. So it's, for me, it's like a logic that they are together or they make a different like truth in a way when they are standing together. So uh, I think it's more about like colors and shape and also, oh, yeah. I, I was wondering if it's uh, similar as your um, uh, work with uh, for a publication. This yeah, the association of images. This is the same way. So in a way, you treated this board as a spread yeah. like, of, a, of a book, no? Yeah, that's true. It's uh, that's why I wanted to show like the books first because for me, it's like yeah, two pictures together make another like uh, meaning, 
uh, in a way. So, and also these pictures have like nothing to do with each other, but it's like, it looks so good together, I think. So, and also they fit really well with the other ones. So I, because I choose the pictures from your archive first, and then I look through my archive. So I didn't think about those pictures that I had in my archive when I picked those out. Uh, so it was just like a coincidence that I have those photos. Uh, but I can go on the second one, this one. This one, so this is the ones from your archive and this is the one from my archive. Uh, and actually this one, a friend of mine thought that was my picture <laughs> when I showed it to him. It was just like, what? I really love that picture in that it's like those models uh, modeling on the sculptures. It's so nice. So here it's some old pictures that I took uh, from the first uh, space I lived in also. Uh, and it's a flower there. So I thought this was really good with these two flower photos. Uh, and then it's the modeling photos and uh, yeah, the food or yeah. But that's, uh, and that was, uh, because this one was from the war or what? Where is this picture from? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the Second World War. Yeah, and this one too. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess you're not working in, you're not necessarily working on series of photos, but you prefer somehow to combine them individually somehow. I mean, two or by three, by four, Hmm. But my question is, once you use one photo, do you then afterwards, do you use it again in different kind of settings? Or once you use it, then you move on? Uh, for me, it's like uh, when I use it, or, yeah, then it's done. Or it's like, I can't, I don't like to use pictures for other things. That's why I really love to have them in the book, because then, then they have like their place and then I'm done with it in a way. So all of these pictures, yeah, they're not used for anything else. So um, yeah, I don't know. I have like a thing for pictures that I don't like to use them again. And when I'm done with them, I'm like, I'm just over to the next. That's also why I love to like change cameras and stuff. So for my first book, I used these small cameras that is the Mew, Olympus Mew cameras. And then the second one, I use uh, uh, F5, that is a bigger camera. And then uh, the third book there, I had like mixed. But uh, in my next project, I'm using large format camera. So for me, it's also about like which type of camera I use and that I don't like blend the uh, things together. But, but the large format definitely will bring some new discipline and some new kind of aesthetics. Uh, for yeah. aesthetics. I mean, you're not gonna probably document as much as you <laughs> did till now. I mean, it's gonna change completely. Uh, well, not completely, but uh, a lot your practice. And yeah. I, I was thinking of maybe, maybe you're gonna move towards like specific series of images now that you're using large format. And also, yeah. why did you choose to use the large format? I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's also a thing, not necessarily commercially, but in terms of uh, you know, details, in terms of uh, how you relate to the camera and to the, uh, you know, the ending, I mean, the, the, the final image. It's a different kind of experience. Yeah, for me it was uh, because I'm using uh, a positive film on it. So I wanted to show like the real picture and that it was only one copy. Uh, so that was my way into it. But now that I'm doing it, it's like, it's just so amazing, like uh, quality. I get so blown away by the quality and uh, it's like, a, it's very hard in a way also to 
uh, do pictures that is still like have this like energy that it's not like you've been lying there for 10 minutes and then we take the picture so it's um yeah i don't know how it will turn out or i've taken a lot of pictures but uh uh i hope i can still have that energy in the pictures but if i think of the images that we have to yeah, sorry, Alison, go on. Can you show us some pictures from this series with a large format camera? Or uh, is it I don't have, I, it's like, <laughs> uh, I don't have them digitally, so I just have them in, uh, yeah. Okay, it's, next time. But yeah, I, can, I can show you one, I'm gonna get it. Right. So, yeah, I remember that I had this because I did it also on, uh, uh, this is negative. So this is a photo I took for, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe we should go out of this. Wait. Yeah, you should maybe stop sharing the screen and where, then you know. Where do I stop? <laughs> On the there. The upper side of the the window or the Ay ay ay. You have to stop share. There. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh so I don't know if you see it, yes. but this is, uh, yeah. So this is just a self portrait. It's like <laughs> also really not easy to focus. So I had to like have a chair there and then I focused on the chair and then I sat there, but uh, it was like, it got in focus in a magical way. So here in this series, I use these pictures. It's for a, a collaboration with a Moria thing that I did. Uh, so I don't know. I feel like I, don't, I feel like I can still like do the same style that, that I do when I also use the large format in a way. It's just uh, you have to be more patient. But what about, what about the transition from the school of photography towards uh, the, the, let's say, the art scene or the, the galleries, uh, generally speaking? I mean, was there something that really influenced you or uh, made a, a huge impact on you during the school that uh, you attended? And uh, how do you see yourself now in this kind of new logic of things, maybe, or not necessarily new, but uh, different? It's uh, in, I feel like the uh, thing in school, I was like, yeah, yeah, they wanted me to do digital and stuff. But when I like tried to find my uh, thing or like the pictures that I liked, I looked at my old like uh, photo album that my mom and dad took and that was like all analog photos. So I just looked through that and I really loved those kind of photos. So then I started to just like do the same as them, just like take pictures of my friends and me and like, yeah, in a way just documenting like a photo album thing. So that was when I like found out that this is what I want to do and this is how I like to take pictures. Uh, but also it was like to, after I was uh, going on the school, I didn't, I didn't get into the art school. So uh, I just started to work. Uh, and then I got in another art school that is like prepare school for going into like the art uh, art academy and after that I didn't get in either but then I made 
my first uh, book and after that it, it was just like uh, everything just went really good then I had exhibitions and had the exhibition on photo gallery and so and then it was like but people are really slow with like uh, now people are just like oh I've seen your first book can I buy it and it's like it's it's not available anymore and I have like three books and it's like really different books and for me it's like when I'm done with it I'm not doing that anymore so that's why also I like to like develop with other ty types of cameras and like because also for me it's like I get so easily also bored by the photography in a way when you do it that much you know it's just like it gets too much and then I get like I want to do other things that's also why I'm like writing and doing sculptures and doing like doing all that I want to do because for me it's not about only the photography it's about like a whole thing or a whole like uh, setup and also I like when uh, when you are in an exhibition that you have like a, a space with other things too because when you're home and you have a picture on the wall it's like it's a whole composition with all the things that you have in your home and it's like it's so much more than just one picture in a way yeah i wanted to to mention this because i saw i came across images of your uh, exhibitions and uh, in fact uh, uh, photographs are uh, only a part of, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what you are developing within these uh, exhibition scenarios. I mean, there, there is also sound, uh, object, uh, performance. Uh, so it's a really complex way of uh, integrating images into these uh, larger scenarios because there is also this narrative component uh, in in what you uh, what you show what you uh, produce in in the displays so uh, um, yeah i i wanted to to emphasize this and to uh, to ask you how how you see photography integrated into this uh, wider practice for you as an artist yeah, I think it's like really natural to to not only like do one thing or for me, it's like I didn't start with photo. I started with like uh, with uh, drawing and painting when I was little. And then I just fall in love with the camera because it was like so easy to show what I think in a way. So it was like uh, for me, it was like an easy tool to use. So, but I also, uh, in my first book, I had like two poems that describe the book. So I like put that in so I could also show that I am not only doing photos. Uh, in the second book, I have like a lot of more of the drawings and uh, poems. Uh, and in the third, it's really much uh, poems, but uh, yeah, for me, it's like they're always they're speaking together. And also when I write, it's about like it's almost like a picture because it's like so much about what you see in a way. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like yeah, they're just like blending together and it's just like, yeah, it's m what I it's my style and what I like. So it's uh, for me, it's not like you can see that it's coming from me anyway, if I do like a sculpture or, a, yeah, or a photography or text or something like that. <laughs> okay, maybe we can uh, uh, start sharing the screen again and uh, see the rest of the yeah. montages that, that you produce for, for okay. this exhibition. So yeah, this is the second one. I really love this picture. These pictures are from your archive. 
this one was like she was so boss so i just had to pick this picture with it <laughs> because it's like two ladies that just show off what they have and also it's not a squeaky clean kind of commercial image i mean no. <laughs> it attempts to be but it's not there so uh, probably this uh, uh, imperfection uh, so to say of uh, this uh, stage set uh, resonated to you <laughs> yeah and this one i really love what is this can you tell me about this uh, it's a uh, it's a photo of a, an illustration. Uh, it's a, um, an allegorical uh, figure, uh, probably made uh, in the late nineteenth century, early twentieth century. Um, I have to 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 look for it and see it in detail. But it's yeah, uh, yeah it's an allegorical. Um, it's a celebration of first of May, from oh, the, so it's a celebration of first of May. Yeah. From okay. the the end of nineteenth century. Mm -hmm. Wow! But uh, it's uh, like a photo of a copy of a drawing, or yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, because you had all of this uh, digitally, and uh, but you also have it like the pictures, or how did you get all of the, all these pictures? It, I mean, they were uh, assembled by Mihai Rovanu, who put together this uh, 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 archive of, of photographs. And uh, uh, the images are extremely um, varied. So uh, they are uh, from yeah, yeah. late ninth or uh, second half of the 19th century uh, up until the uh, 80s, uh, even 90s in, in Romania. So it's a, it's a really wide um, um, selection of, of photos that is, is included in this archive. This is why historically it is so rich and important and we want to uh, integrate it into, into the public discourse and to also uh, help preserve it. But you can, one can find any kinds of, uh, you know, uh, prints of all sizes, uh, negatives of all, all, all sizes, uh, glass plates of uh, all sizes. I mean, it's amazing, uh, you know, uh, view on the history of the medium uh, as well. And uh, it, the, the archive belongs now to the Anka Orovanu. Um, so we are just helping her in, you know, in a, uh, somehow uh, digitalize, digitizing it and uh, making it more accessible to the public, mm -hmm. uh, also by organizing these kind of exhibitions, but doing a lot of work uh, behind the, the, the you know, uh, work of preserving and organizing it and um, uh, indexing it. That's more complicated. Huh, but so so uh, it's not like. Uh, but do you know who who have taken the photo photograph? In, in most of the cases, no. In most oh. of the cases, no. We don't have this kind of information. In some cases, yes. For example, the photographers who worked in Romania the uh, uh, second half of nineteenth century or, or and beginning of twentieth century. But those are only a, a, a specific part of the archive. Most of them are unknown. I mean, I mean, they have unknown till now uh, uh, authors. So uh, it's complicated to identify the context in which the photos were taken. But of course, I mean, Mihai Van was very passionate uh, uh, about um, the, the photography, and uh, he he tried to save also to save as much as he could. Uh, you know, this kind of uh, small uh, archives that he found or, um, or pictures that he bought from flea markets, for example, and reassembled them into a, a, a very large in, uh, collection of images that has a specific structure. I mean, he tried also to organize, of course, he tried to organize the, 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 the collection uh, following specific themes, for example.
Yeah, it's really funny with like yeah, the all the commercial and fashion shoots and stuff like that that it's in the archive. I really love that. Yeah, I mean it's a pity that you couldn't come to here because I mean the, the whole idea was to immerse yourself uh, uh, into the, the 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 materials. I mean to see yeah. with your own eyes how diverse and uh, important the, the materials are. But uh, at least uh, you got you you had the access to this kind of digital images. Again, yeah. unfortunately, without the description sheets. I mean, some of them have. The ones that you can find on, on our website, uh, they have these description sheets. Uh, so a little bit more information about them. But um, uh, most of them that, I mean, that we managed to scan, I mean, uh, they are not yet indexed. No, OK, OK. Mm. I just take this next one. So this book, I really love. That's from your archive. And this book uh, was like, uh collage book or something it's a kind of a very old scrapbook um very beautiful album that we found and uh, also it's a very strange one i mean it, <laughs> it looks completely um strange and also alexandra actually she she did a, a, a show she showed this kind of album in a in a specific intervention that she had uh, the beginning of our project, but in a different kind yeah, of context. It's, it's very interesting how uh, historical materials and uh, more uh, uh, common life materials are mixed in this album. No, you also enjoy this kind of uh, strange uh, connections. Yeah, it's uh, it, for me. I was just like, I wish that I made that album. <laughs> when I saw it, I was just like, oh, this is so nice. With also like to see how it was like, uh, you could see how the floors was and stuff in the, in the building. It's like uh, curating uh, the past on your own uh, little, uh, in your own little book. So, <laughs> not too late, Maria. <laughs> no, that's true. So I feel like this was like, uh, just like everything together and hair also is like, just like the everything together. So that was like the comparison on this one. Here also it's uh, your pictures uh, and mine. And then here, I really love, yeah, that this is from like the uh, fashion show, isn't it? Like backstage or something or? It's hard to say, probably, but not necessarily. It, uh... We think that uh, it's from a shooting by the seaside with a, a group of fashion models, but uh. it's not connected to a catwalk, I think. It's more uh, in the backstage of a photo shooting. Yeah, that's it's so nice. There is a, series, a big series of uh, images uh, in the fashion section, this kind of images from the 80s uh, uh, that were um, uh, used in some sort of um, advertising for tourism. It was a state agency uh, named Publi Tourism, which um, did some kind of advertising for uh, for different uh, touristical uh, places in Romania. So was that also the ET hat picture? Is that also from that? I think so, because you can recognize some of the models that uh, are in different uh, settings, but uh, mostly by the seaside. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. huh. yeah, and then it's like this group pictures that I took on a party many, many years ago. So I feel like those are like connecting. I really love like pictures that is like more like a movie or you can see like the, mm, how people are walking or how they're like yeah, acting themselves in a way. I actually done some serial photos like that that is just like uh 
at taking pictures like really fast and then you can just like see it's more like a stop motion in a way so here and uh yeah <laughs> i don't know what to say about this but uh yeah i feel like it's logical <laughs> so and this is the last one this is uh yeah so this was mine and this was from the archive and this one i it, these two are mine and this is from the archive so she, here is like a lady in a room or something i don't know that was what i thought and then i took like this picture that i took in i think it was 2006 when i was little I was like in sixth grade and had like my first two rats so this is my room and when I was a child <laughs> like so I think that's like a really funny compares say like between those two pictures and the uh, uh, picture on the right from from uh... this one is the old one that I took actually from a shoot that I had like, uh, so this is a model. So mm -hmm. I think that she looks a little bit like him or they're like <laughs> in the same <laughs> in the same way. So this was from a, a fashion uh, photo shooting or? Yeah. This is also digital. So this is like, uh, this is after I went to uh, school and was like, yeah, going over to digital because of that. So I did that some, maybe one year after I went to that school, I took a lot of digital also, while I also took analog, so. You also work usually uh, for the fashion uh, industry, let's say, or? I think I like, I did it more before I tried to like, uh, to get stuff and but now I'm not doing it I'm actually gonna do a commercial uh, now but then I can do it like in my own way so for me it's like if I'm gonna do it I want to like uh, do it in my own uh, way so and you can you you have the rights then to yeah. use these photos in, also in your art practice in your books uh... Uh, this photo is just like uh, I arranged that, that shoot, so it, it wasn't for something. But uh, if I do like uh, uh, things that is like commercial, I, I think I could use them myself too. But I don't know if, if I want to, I would probably do it. But I don't like to mix it either or like, I don't know. <laughs> I want if it's like... If it's out there, I don't want to like use it in my archive or I like to like don't publish the things I do before it's like in a book or in an exhibition. So, and yeah, here is the picture of the installation. So it's like, uh, for me, it was important that it's really close and uh, yeah, that it's, it looks more like two sentences for me, <laughs> in a way that we talked about yesterday. That it's like, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, and we, we invite people to, to see it and uh, to see it with the rest of the exhibition. Uh, and I think it's, uh, um, a really, um, how should I put it, exciting match between the display of the exhibition and what you are proposing. Mm. And uh, yeah, uh, we, uh, we are really, really excited to, to have you on board with this. And uh, yeah, if, I don't know if there are questions, but um, if 
If not, I think we we asked you plenty of questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, at least us uh, and uh, yeah, we we thank you for your participation. Thank you so much. For thank you very much, Maria, and good luck. Good luck. <laughs> I hope, I really and uh, we we are really looking forward to see what what, what you are doing next. Good luck with the last four months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.